What's up, divas and divos? It's your girl, April. So you guys already know what time it is. It is Real Talk Diva Time. Real Talk Wednesday is whatever you guys want to call it. That's what it is. So I know I always be like, um, I'm not going to make this really long. Maybe I don't always be like that, but I be like that enough. So this time, I'm really going to try not to make it that long because I have had a really hectic week. Um, it did start on, I think it was Sunday because today is Tuesday. But of course, you know, as by the time this video goes up, it'll be a Monday. Um, and yes, I have had a very long, hard trying week. Just a second. So yeah, like I was saying, I've had a long, very long trying week. Um, and I've just had a long one. Um, so it all started off on Sunday during the daytime. Um... And it wasn't really me. It was my daughter, Tatiana. You know, my grandson, Tinky's mother. In case you guys are not aware, um, I do have two grandsons. One is four with my eldest son, Jerron, who will be 25 on the sixth, on the 23rd of August. And I'm thinking about the 16th of August. That's Mumsy's birthday. They're a week apart. And he has a four-year-old who was my first grandbaby. And I miss them a lot. And then I have Tinky, um, Tatiana, who's 21, and her son, who's 2. So they live with me. And my eldest son, he lives in New York. So anyway, Tati, actually, I had to bring her to the hospital on um, Sunday night, rather Monday morning. Because she's been, she was complaining all day about... You know, stomach pains, cramps. She thought it was like, you know, her birth control or what have you. Her IUD, I think. Yeah, IUD. And I kept telling her, no, go, go, go. You should go to the emergency room and bring it to the emergency room. Anyway, make a long story short, 2 o'clock in the morning, which was then Monday morning, she wanted to go. She, was, she had a fever. Sure enough, they admitted her to the hospital because of her appendix. So she has been in the hospital since Sunday night, Monday, whatever you want to call it. And it's her appendix, so... They don't know what they're going to do, and hopefully they figure this out soon because my grandson really misses her, and I brought him up there to visit her and such. So I really hope that they take care of this issue fast because my daughter is missing him too, which really sucks. So they miss each other. I miss her. We all miss her. And so my week, my week is like really, really hectic, and I really want to get this done quickly because I do want to bring Tinky to see her, but I also want to bring my my middle son, my middle child, somewhere for to pick up his his check from his job, like so. And he wants to go visit her too, and he wants to go get his hair retwisted. So it's like, damn, do a bitch get a break? I mean, I I'm serious. Like I really need like a break from everything, like a vacation. But then if I take a vacation, it's like, oh, I'm gonna miss everybody. So it's like, do I even take a vacation? What do I do? And I'd be like, oh, I'm gonna take a vacation, and I don't. So I'll start missing everybody. So I just need a motherfucking break, or a maid, or somebody, a nanny, or I don't know, but I need to take time for myself. So anyway, before I even get into this, because you know I always start off with something about me or whatever, and I just did tell you guys about that. So pray for my daughter, please. Um, you know, that's my sweetheart right there. So we're gonna jump into this real quick. Um, so the first thing I want to tell you guys is I know y'all like what's up with the wig grip. This let me tell y'all, I showed y'all this a couple weeks ago because I've only had this a couple of weeks. This thing, let me tell y'all, I paid it was 20 bucks on Amazon. I had a $5 off promotion thing on my account. So I only paid $15 for it. Everybody's on YouTube bragging about how great it is. So that's the reason why I got this one. There was other ones that were way cheaper. Let me tell y'all. Do y'all see? I had to sew it together because it stretched out. And it doesn't even hold my wigs anymore. It just slips back off of my head. And I was really disappointed. Not even my wigs, but my head scarves. Because I really like to wear on my head scarves. And I was not about to spend... 20 more dollars on this particular brand the milano brand this was supposed to be the original and that's what it says the original wig grip comfort band let me tell y'all this much i was not about to spend another 20 dollars like do you see look at this look at this look at this little strap right here it has been stretched out and shrunken down like i don't really know what's going on here but i had no choice but to sew it because if i hadn't sewn it this portion would have been all the way over here and it would not have been on the velcro so I had to sew it, and it still needs to be sewn again. So I said, let me go buy another one. But this time around, I'm not spending $20. So I went on Amazon, and I got this one by eBoot. This is the eBoot, the two-pack velvet. 
So you get two of these for $9. I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? And let me tell you, you get black and brown. The brown color is brown. It's not this color. I don't really care because I will be honest and tell you that this, being that this is this color, when you have your part in your closure or your frontal, you can really see it. Like it makes everything really, really bright right there in like a certain area, which is kind of like a turn off. So I would rather have a darker color. So they only have dark brown and black which is fine i don't even care all right and this is mainly for my head scar so they don't slip back so for nine bucks you get a two pack and i already opened it up and i put it back in here so you guys can see what i opened the brown one this looks identical when i say identical it looks identical to this one right here okay so let me let's let's try this out it doesn't have the label on it but um I know that the bigger portion, which is this, goes on this side of your head. So I don't really need no directions of how to situate my wig. But I do need to fix my hair, okay? Meaning I need to, you know, restyle my hair. Um. Also, before I even restyle my hair, I'm going to put this on my face this is the kiss new york professional pro touch mattifying primer okay so they did send me this and i told you guys a million times about octoly where you can get free products to show on your social media page and i love free stuff okay a lot of the stuff that i use normally comes from there and i use it on a daily basis like this doll face you guys see me use this in every video this is a clarifying balancing toner love this i love really all of their products that they have um so i use this daily and i've also well this this i actually didn't get from there but i got this from this company bio elements and this is good for people that's older so you know keep that in mind but yeah i got like a bunch of free stuff from them which i absolutely love um and one of the free products um that i absolutely love that i used last week is the lancome translucent powder and i showed you guys this i've been using it ever since honey let me tell y'all Whoo, child, your face will be flawless. Like, you know, I'm not saying, oh, beauty guru, whatever, but it works really well. That's all I'm going to say. But in the beginning of the video, I did use this, which is the UD Primer Spray, UHD Primer Spray. This is by Shop Miss A. This is from their new brand, which is the A2O. I did feature this in one of my videos. I love their stuff. Really, really inexpensive. So, um, yes, definitely give them a try. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this primer. It is mattifying primer. It's first time for me opening it. Um, 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 well, not the first time. I did squeeze out a little bit. Um, I like to use the mattifying primer because my face is very oily, so I don't like to use certain kind of primers. It has to be like a certain texture, more or less like a silicone base, so that should be good for my face. I didn't use it a lot. Like, I used a little bit yesterday, but not a lot, um, because for this, you know what it reminds me of? Ooh, my lashes. I did my lashes over. Um, it's mattifying primer, so you know what it reminded me of? I only used a little bit, um, and I only used a tiny bit, so I, I was kind of afraid. It reminds me of that Becca um, Cosmetics. Um, is it by Becca? Yeah, it is by Becca Cosmetics because I have the foundation, but the, she has, like, um, a mattifying primer, too, and um, I did purchase that a while back, and um, it was way more expensive. It was like 40 something dollars, and I ended up taking it back because it was a little bit too mattifying, and it kind of like gave me all these dry patches, so I took it back, and... I tried this yesterday, like I said, I used only a little bit because you only need to use a little bit in certain areas, and I used only a little bit, and it works way better than the Becca. I'm going to be honest and tell you that. It's way cheaper, and it works way better. So, you know what I'm saying? Which is good for me because it's, I get really oily, like really, really bad, so... But that Becca stuff was a little bit too much for my skin, like I was like, oh no. So definitely check out Oxley. They did send me this um, Kiss Professional Eyeshadow along with it. You just have to apply for products and just give a reason why they should send it to you. Um, they always send you like extra with Kiss. And they sent me this shadow, this eyeshadow, African Violet. Now I don't really do purple shadows too much. So I don't know if I'm going to wear this on a video or put this on. But it's very pretty. It's a matte color, very pretty color um, is the payoff. 
you probably have to do like a couple of colors on it but you know I don't really do purples so anyway so yes let's get into this real talk the most that I really have to talk about is the fact that my daughter is in the hospital unfortunately and other than that my life has been really cool um, I just need a break I'm gonna go to the spa i like I said I did get a big I'm not a vacation but a spa thing from one of my um, subscribers here and she she texts me so she's more or less like a friend to me now she's not like a subscriber um, but unfortunately she doesn't live over in this area um, and if you see me I'm just brushing um, I have gel all in my hair which I'm just brushing out and you know what sucks Normally, my gel, my baby hair swoop down the way they are like this. They will last for like, oh my God, three days. But I have been really sweating a lot lately. Probably because it's so goddamn hot. But it isn't even hot. Lately, it's been very humid out here in Arizona because it has been raining a lot. So it's been very, very humid. And normally, it's just a dry heat, which is a blessing for somebody like myself who sweats a lot and whose hair cannot take the humidity. So I like the dry heat. That's if you if you have problems with your hair, the dry heat is perfect. Move on out here. But then don't get mad when I when it gets like 115 degrees in the summertime, and you be like, "Bitch, you said it was dry heat. You didn't say it was hell heat." Anyway, so normally with my hair. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll gel it down. Not, and I hate to say that. I'll gel it down. I'll gel it down, okay? And first, I'll start off with this, like I did the last week. I'm showing you guys. Um, so, I'll normally gel it down, which I do. And um, with that, and then on top of it, I'll just take a couple of dabs of my Gorilla Snap Gel, which is in a yellow um tube well this time i'm using this one right here because the yellow tube was expired yes hair gel does expire and it expired in march which is still it still works good i just wanted to try something different now this one is supposed to be a teeny tiny bit stronger it hasn't been working like that maybe because the yellow one that i've been using is expired and it works a lot better but i think it hasn't been working like that because it's been so humid out here so my whole hair underneath has been sweating a lot so other than that, I really do like the Gorilla Snot Gel only because, for one, it doesn't flake up. Um, it doesn't flake. Like, if you are used to using, like, the Got To Be Gel, which I have that as well, it gets, as soon as it dries, it gets all, like, a white residue, very, very flaky. Well, the Gorilla Snot doesn't do that, which is great because I hate to see, I hate that, um, that um, flakiness. Um, the only thing that it does, as you can see, it kind of gets gritty, but that it only gets gritty when you start brushing it out, like if it's like in your hair, and then it just comes right out. But it doesn't, when it dries, it doesn't flake up, which is great. So I love the Gorilla Snot Gel. Plus, it holds really good too. But being that it's been very humid out here, it seems like nothing is holding for me. Like nothing is working for my um, hair. And I've always had an issue with hair gel. Um, a lot of people think because my hair is fine that it's going to hold with hair gel, but it doesn't. It actually, it's so hard for me to keep my hair gelled down. Um, it just curls up. It just like really curls up. So when I found out that the got to be and the gorilla snot work for me, I was like, yes, honey. Yes. Now, if I was to use this alone, girl, please forget about it. Um, a bitch wouldn't have no swoopage, nothing. That's why I don't understand how people could just use that alone. Like, that stuff does not hold your hair in, in, in place. Maybe for some it does, but for me, for April, it really, really doesn't. Um, but other than that, um, I don't really have much to talk about lately. I haven't been really doing much of anything. I've been hanging out with my friend Monroe. Um, I do have a new friend, Monroe. She's a new, um, I actually met her at the post office and she's super cool. So we've been hanging out and talking. She actually lives kind of like right around the corner from me. 
and we've been talking and hanging out. She's a really nice lady. Um, she makes, she does beads for a living. She sells beads and stuff for a living. And she has people all over the world that actually buy beads from her. You'd be amazed. I was like so amazed at her bead collection, like her office, her work supply of beads and how, you know, she is just, she's a bead supplier. So, you know, like a jewelry supplier. She's like the Marc Jacobs of beads. Definitely. Definitely the Marc Jacobs of beads. So we are are supposed to go to Vegas this I think it's Friday or Saturday for a convention um, so hopefully I can still go if not then that's okay because we have another trip planned in September for Labor Day but um, so see I'm getting out more and I'm so happy I found a friend um, I now I have two friends my bestie Rebecca and I'm Monroe I'm going to miss Rebecca when she goes to Cali. Um, but, yeah, so we're supposed to go to um, Vegas. Well, we already have a plan to go to Vegas. But when I say we're supposed to be, meaning, you know, I'm not about to leave my daughter anywhere by herself um, after she get out the hospital. So it all depends on how my daughter is feeling because I'm not about to leave her. So, you know. And Monroe is very understanding about that. She's a sweetheart. And her mom is super cute, too. Okay? So, and then we have a trip planned for Labor Day. So, I'm looking forward to that. But, anyway, so we've been hanging out and stuff like that. I've um, been helping her try to organize her beads and stuff and things like that. So, yeah. Super cool, you guys. But other than that, I haven't really been up to much of anything. I uh, haven't been able to really make my wigs like I wanted to lately because, you know, I've been really busy. And I've been trying to just hold down the fort. And, you know, my love life is still in shambles, like meaning I don't have one. But that's all right. Mr. Right will sooner or later come come along at least I have someone I could go hang out with you know what I mean and stuff like that and that's just basically about it so like I was saying and I know I said this already this real talk I'm trying not to make it so long because I got so much to do. So, let's get into this real talk. If you have a real talk issue that you want me to talk about, meaning you got somebody in your life, your business, or you got something you need to vent about, or you need some advice from me and the rest of the ladies here, then go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please put in the subject line of the email, Real Talk, so that I know it's a Real Talk, so when I look it up on my email, I can pull it up. As well as that, if you have, if you'd like the names in the, the email to be changed, meaning your name is April, but you don't want anybody to know it's you emailing me because you just feel like everybody going to know it's you, you can go ahead and say to me in email the names have already been changed. And if you don't do that, I'm just going to automatically assume that the names have been changed, okay? So, yes, you guys, let's get on to this real talk. I have three that I would really like to get to before my memory card runs out and before my time runs out. people showing fake love to me straight up to my face. Straight up to my face. I've been down so long, it look like up to me. They look up to me. I got fake people showing fake love to me straight up to my face. All right, Zebras, let's read this one. And I'm going to read it. It's right here. Hey girl, how are you doing today? You can call me Leah. I just have recently subscribed to your channel. Honestly, for the past couple of days, and even though we don't know each each other at all, I started to really fall in love with your videos and you because I feel that you're genuinely, genuinely you. I see that we have some things in common based on your videos I've seen. I love to do makeup and wear wigs, and I just started wearing them back in March this year for my birthday. So just to give you a bit of info about me, my real name is... I'm not going to tell you because you already told me. Born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. I am 20, 20 years old and I am just about to finish beauty school. I wanted to get your advice on something I've been dealing with for some years now that has affected my self-confidence within myself as a woman and even the past relationships I've had, I've had been in. 
Now, ever since I was 11, a preteen, I've been having hair that is little that is literally in the middle between my breasts, and I have hair that goes up to my belly button, which really annoys the shit out of me. I've also discovered some facial hair that's on my chin, and a few hairs hairs here and there on underneath my neck. Now, I know people can, can't see it. However, this is something that I feel like I have to be self-conscious about. And I have my own reasons for that. But I always constantly shave and everything. Plus, I love to look nice, and especially because it's hot now. It makes me feel like something is wrong with me or my body, like it's my fault. This is definitely something that I don't like to talk about because this is embarrassing for me. Because I feel like nobody can relate to me or may judge me, you know? It's one thing to deal with my acne, but it's another thing to deal with this. I even have expressed this to my best friends, that I consider them as my sisters, and even to my current boyfriend. It really meant so much to me when my boyfriend said that I'm still sexy to him with or without the hair, and that I have nothing to worry about. I know that he loves me for the way I am no matter what. I wish I can accept all of myself the same way. Can you please help, April? Thank you. So she did say her name is Leah. She wants us to call her Leah. And she's basically concerned about body hairs, it seems like, because she's talking about the hairs that's in between. She has hair in between her chest, and she has hair coming from her belly button down and under her chin and on her neck. Sweetheart, honey child, I would not even worry about that type of shit because let me tell you something. I, got, I, I don't think you're the only woman that has hair from her private area to her belly button because I have that as well you know what I'm saying so I shave it off some days I don't fucking shave it off and I'm gonna tell you why because some days I just don't give a fuck I mean it's one thing we are women and it seems like as a woman we go through so much we have to always be pripping and priming ourselves like I'm doing right now to feel better about ourselves or to feel more confident about ourselves or to maybe even uh, um, attract the opposite or the same sex to us. You know what I'm saying? As a woman, we go through a lot. And it's one thing that we already got to deal with those monthly things as a woman. You know what I mean? But we also have to worry about, okay, let me go ahead and shave. Let me go ahead and do my hair. Let me go ahead and get my nails done. Let me go ahead and get waxed. Let me go ahead and put my face on. Let me go ahead and get my weave done. Let me go ahead and get some heels and hurt my fucking feet. Let me put this girdle on. You know what I'm saying? Let me put my titties up let me get an ass let's do all of this because we either want to blend in or be socially accepted or just feel good about ourselves let me tell you something leah you are not the only woman in this world or even watching this motherfucking video that may have hairs on her chin a bitch like me get like a couple and it's always right here. I always get two. And it's not the color that you you would think like you know what I'm saying it's like a brownish red color I don't know why my chin hairs are brownish red color. Even my private area hairs are. Okay, but that's a TMI. But, you know what I'm saying? And you know what I do? I just get my motherfucking tweezer out and I pluck that shit. I pull it out. Or how about this? Because you didn't say anything about a mustache or shaving your lip hair. Okay? I either will wax this or shave it. And you know something? It needs to be shaved right now because I see the hairs. We all go through it. I got hairs on my stomach that come up from my private area that's all by my belly button. And sometimes they grow to like right here. You know, there are times when, okay, I don't even bother shaving them because I be feeling like this. Who's going to see it? And then on top of that, if you do see it and, and you're my boyfriend or if I was lucky to have somebody as my boyfriend or girlfriend, whatever, you know, whatever I decide to choose. It's like this. I'm a human being. Ain't nobody perfect. I ain't seen nobody that was fucking perfect yet. All right? Nobody's perfect. We, this is who we are. Hair grows wherever the fuck it wants to grow, and you shouldn't feel self-conscious about it. I mean, I have my issues. I have my flaws that I think, like with my stomach, I have lost a lot of weight. And no matter what weight I lose, my stomach just say, you know what, bitch? I'm hanging the fuck around. I'm in this for the long haul. I'm not going no motherfucking where. And then I have my days where, you know what? I feel so self-conscious. And I even will look at my videos that I do vlogs and be like, oh, hell to the no. Bitch, you need to put on a girdle. A girl, you can't go on camera looking like that. You look a mess. You know what I'm saying? But then I have to think to myself, um, self, you human. 
And if nobody don't like how you fucking look, there's always the X button and you can fucking exit the fuck off of it. Now, like I was saying, as women, we go through a lot. And it's sad that we have to go through a lot and then still not be accepted or still not be happy with ourselves. Take, for example, with me, my teeth. I'm happy about my new teeth in the front. I'm, You know what? I'm very happy. But yet and still, I'm still kind of not happy because I still need work to be done. And then I hate the fact that because I have these new teeth, I have like this little list. Like everything has like this extra at the end of it. Not everything, but certain words or letters. And that drives me crazy. So now it's like, dang, girl, you got new teeth and you love them, but you still not happy because now these are the, this is what happened. Maybe sooner or later that'll go away. And if it doesn't, then oh well. Take, for example, this morning when I was taking a shower. Now, I realized I didn't shave under my arms. So I had to shave. Because I got on a tank top and I don't want to be outside with no, you know what, underarm hair. Then when I put on my bra, I was like, dang, girl, you're going to wear a tank top. Your titties need to sit up. Won't you go ahead and get your little plastic thing. See that? Right there. Put it on your bra straps and it brings your boobs up. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm doing all of this just for reasons to make myself feel better. And then I have my days... Okay, let me tell you a story about me. I used to never go outside without having my makeup done. Meaning, if it was across the fucking street, the store, you would not catch me at that motherfucker without my face done or my hair done. Now, I wasn't into makeup like that, thank God, because shit, if a bitch needed to go get a loaf of bread for a sandwich and she didn't want to go because her makeup wasn't done, then I would have been starving back then. But my hair had to be done, okay? At least I had to do my hair. When I moved here to Arizona, a little bit of me changed a lot. And I said a little bit of me changed a lot. Meaning, I didn't change a lot about me, but the things that I did change were a lot. Meaning, I stopped worrying about what other people thought of me and what other people would judge me by. You know what I'm saying? If my hair wasn't done, then oh well. I'm going to put my scarf on and I'm going to still be cute. You know what I'm saying? If my makeup wasn't done, oh well, I was born without that shit. And if you can't accept me for who the fuck I am, then I don't know what the fuck to tell you. Because this is me. And so I still have those moments. Now I go out, I might just tie my scarf a different way so it'll look way cuter. Excuse the sun because it's, it's you know. You know what I'm saying? But I don't really worry as much. i never forget this time I was over here at the store. I was at Fry's. You know what I'm saying? Grocery store. Not the one by me, but the one by my daughter Tati's old job. And I was, I had on a scarf. I had on a scarf. And it was tied cute. It wasn't tied like I'm about to tie it, but it was tied decent. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't just like, oh, I'm putting on a scarf. It was tied decent. And I had on um, some, I think I had on some jean shorts and a white tank top and some flip-flops. Now, y'all bitches know I stay in some fucking flip-flops. I don't give a fuck what time of day it is, where the fuck I'm going. I stay in some flip-flops because I'll be damned if I'm about to let my feet hurt from anybody, for any motherfucking body. I've had my fair share of wearing heels every day, all day, and that's just what I wanted to do. But, you know, my feet start hurting, and I'm not about to be having the bottom of my motherfucking balls and my feet hurting for no fucking body. So, the best thing for April to do is to be comfortable. And if you can't invite me somewhere and I can't wear my motherfucking flip-flops well then deuces bitches because I don't have to come so I like flat I like flat wear I like flip-flops and I like elastic meaning I need to wear elastic I mean I don't have to but I say this because I get tired of putting on a motherfucking girdle and trying to be cute for some fucking body you know what I'm saying it's cute to be cute but I get tired of having to fight with the girdle, I'd be tired of being sweaty and being sucked in, my back hurting and shit like that, or my skin being pressed together and being very uncomfortable. So there are moments when I feel like this. Either you are like me who for who the fuck I am, or you just not gonna like me. It is what it is. And on top of that, if you 
or to the type of person where you don't like me because my hair ain't done or because I don't have my makeup on a certain way or because I wear flip-flops or my stomach is a little bit bulgy or I got a fucking little bu couple of chin hairs or mustache hairs or belly hairs, then bitch, I don't really need to be your friend no how because that means that you're not the type of person that I want to be around. But you know what I'm saying? I'll never forget the story I was about to tell you. One day I was at the grocery store and I had on this white scarf and this Walmart tank top because I stay in Walmart getting tank tops. Okay, I had on this white head scarf. And, you know, I was getting some groceries, and I think I had Mumsy with me, because I'm never by myself. Or maybe I was with my grandson. Either way, I was with somebody. And, um, getting into my car, and this lady drive by in the parking lot. She like, Muffins is my lovers. Okay, now, first of all, yes, that is my YouTube name, but everybody know my name is April. Whatever. You can call me whatever, just don't call me nothing rude. So... The first thing this fucking lady says, and she probably watching or whatever, and that's fine if she watching because I don't really give a fuck. She just basically was like, I ought to take a picture because you are not diva out. I just looked at her and I was like, you must don't want to keep your phone then. How the fuck you going to tell me you're going to take a picture of me because I ain't looking like no motherfucking diva? Bitch, I don't know what fucking diva is in your category or your book, but a diva is someone to me who can hold their self-confidence and be a lady and be proud of who the fuck they are. Bitch, I don't have to be dressed the fuck up and flawed the fuck out because I don't know if it's me or maybe there's other people out there like me. And if y'all agree, then listen, leave the comment below hashtag I like to be comfortable okay am I the only one am I or am I not the only one who we get tired of being all flawed out do you always want to wear your motherfucking hair done and wear makeup and shoes and be always dressed up or do you want to throw on some fucking elastic pants whether it be leggings sweatpants and some comfortable ass sneaker shoes or flip-flops or whatever the fuck it is and be relaxed because I don't know about y'all but being dressed the fuck up all the time hair makeup and all of that shit all the motherfucking time is a little bit much for me there are days when I don't even care all right like I go outside and my hair is done and my face is done or whatever and when I say my face is done meaning it's washed okay that's it meaning it's fucking washed it's clean that's what my face is done all right and when I say my hair is done meaning this is done because this makes me comfortable to swoop my little edges down all right and put on my head wrap and I like to be like that I don't like to always wear makeup all right that's not what I like to do all the time not all the time it's too fucking hot for that. I'm about to put some on now, only because I'm just doing this video. And I just wanted to try some, well, not even try anything out, but I just wanted to just do the video. But I don't always feel like I have to be dressed the fuck up to be a lady and to be accepted. So, honey, don't worry about your extra hairs because I got them. And I'm pretty sure that I'm not the only one that has them, okay? We are human beings, meaning we have what God has given us, and we have to accept that. And I'm very acceptable to whatever he's given me. I like what I have. And it may not be the best, but I'm a human being. And we have to be very acceptable. Sometimes as women, we are so judgmental towards ourselves that it's a shame that we're just so judgmental. I'll be the first to tell you, I'm always talking about my, or looking at myself in the mirror. There was a time when, um, because you guys know, or maybe not all of you know, but I have very bad varicose veins in my legs. Like, you know what I'm saying? I have veins that are just really bad in my legs. And for my age, they, they have been like this for, for years, not just recently, but for in my early 20s okay so I have very poor circulation so my veins burst a lot and it leaves scars it leaves blood clots in my legs and um, just put it like this my legs are not the prettiest okay um I have um cellulite in my legs which I'm pretty sure I ain't the only one with that okay and I used to be very self-conscious of my legs they my legs are not that bad but to me I have I, you know what it is you see women on the internet who have like these beautiful legs and shit and you be like dang I wish I look like that but then again you gotta think bitch that's photoshop okay bitch that's motherfucking photoshop you can look like that if you really want to okay but 
um, what I was trying to say is I used to be very self-conscious about my legs. So I would never wear shorts. I would always wear either very long skirts or shorts that were like damn near to my ankles. So what was the point? You know what I'm saying? And just what recently I've decided like recently, like within the past few years, I've said to myself, girl, please, you ain't the only one with legs that look like this. Put on your motherfucking shorts, be cool and enjoy yourself and, and look cute. Fuck what anybody thinks about how your legs look. You have lived your life. You are a good person. You are a nice person and people should not judge you on how you fucking look. Okay. Bottom line. And if nobody can accept you for who you are, then you know what? I guess they just can't motherfucking accept you for who you are. Now, I have days where I feel like, dang, girl, did you really look like this when you went outside? Or are you really going to go outside looking like this? Like, like I said, I need to shave off some of this little bit of facial hair. You hear that stupid ass dog of mine downstairs. Coco always trying to bark. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have facial hair that I need to shave the fuck off. My little mustache. And you know something? Let me get my little, let me get my little mustache shaving razor. Because I have one. It's nothing special about it. But listen. We okay. human. So as I was saying, my little mustache shaving razor. I love this razor. It's my little mustache one. So I got my baby wipes. I'm going to put a little bit of this on my face right there in that area. Okay, honey, because listen, like I said, we human. And it, you have to be comfortable in your skin, all right? You have to be really comfortable in your skin and who you are as a person. If nobody can accept you for who you are, then maybe those are the type of people that not don't need to be around you. And it's good that you have a boyfriend that loves you for who you are because I'm pretty sure he's not perfect as well as your friends. But you have to realize a little bit of things that you are going through is nothing compared to what a lot of other people go through. So for me, this is one thing. You might not have mentioned this, but this is what I, be, I get irritated with so you know what I do I have this little thing right on him Tati my daughter is getting discharged in two hours okay so see I'm happy she just texted me so my little hair is not in grown in yet because I would tweeze it but normally it's there but it there you have it. So I'm pretty sure that somebody is going to be like, girl, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't be using a razor. It's only going to come back thicker and stuff. Listen, for whoever want to fucking think that and type it, bitch, please don't. Ahead of time, I'm going to tell you right now, please don't motherfucking do it. And if you have already done that, I would suggest you delete your motherfucking comment because I've been doing this for years. Like when I say years, I've been doing this for like 20 something years and the only thickness it grows back is that little bit of peach fuzz, okay? So it ain't grown back no thick. I hate when people always worry about other people and see that's where I come to terms when I just said stop worrying about what other people think about you and worry about a little uh, and worry about and worrying about little minor things like that that don't really matter you know what I'm saying if people can't like you for who you are and accept you for who you are then you don't need them in your lives but also you have to realize that the little bit of things that you worry about and that you're going through somebody in the world is going through something that's way more drastic um, detrimental, whatever you want to call it, than you. And the littlest things like body, facial hairs, and things like that, yeah, we can easily take care of those. That's what they got razors for and laser surgery and waxing and all of that good stuff. So I wouldn't even worry about that. And as far as the hairs on by your belly button, honey, that's part of womanhood. That's a part of, of being an adult. I'm shit because I got them and I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that gets them. You know what I'm saying? They grow from down there. They growing from down below. Okay? Like that's serious. That's where they growing from. So I would not even freaking worry about that at all. Not at all. Okay, you got, there's so much more to worry about. You got yourself a good man because you haven't complained about the type of person he is. And he's very accepted to you of who you are. And maybe the things that you're worrying about ain't even nothing huge or major. You ever think, like, with me, like, I, I worry about a lot of stuff. And like I said, I always want to be accepted. or Not even, I don't even want to be accepted, but I just like to blend in. And I just like to make sure that. 
you know, I'm happy with myself. And I have to stop worrying about, oh, well, she got this on. Or, oh, well, she got that on. I got to stop worrying about what other people are doing with themselves or how other person looks. Because when you look at other people and you feel like, oh, they look great or they've got it going on or they're, you know, they're smaller waist than you or, uh, let's see, their teeth look good, their veins and their legs look good. You got to realize that, yeah, maybe all of this stuff they got good going for themselves. These things that you don't have, they may have. But there might just be something that you have that they don't have. So you have to stop and think sometimes. Appreciate life. Because for one, it's very short. And I always say this. So you always need to be happy for what you have. And just live your life to the fullest. Because you never know. Tomorrow may not be guaranteed to you. And you won't be here. And Or on top of that, you might be really sick tomorrow. And then you realize, like, damn, I just worried about that little thing all of this time. Well, here it is. You know, I could have been worrying about a whole lot more. So stop worrying about little things. What you're going through is a, is womanhood. And, yeah, just like you said, it's you have acne. Listen, maybe you should stop stressing yourself out, girl, about the little things. Those little things and just be happy and be grateful that you were able to wake up and smile and you're able to wake up and email or watch YouTube or have a friend or a boyfriend. Because, girl, you got something that I wish I motherfucking had a man, a boyfriend, somebody who could tell me I love you for the way you are. I love you for you. You're beautiful to me. See, you got something I wish I had. I get tired. Sometimes I get tired of seeing women. Um with a man being all happy now true indeed i don't it's not that i really get tired of it but huh i bet you would like to be happy too i would like to be out there smiling i would like for somebody to say to me i love you for who you are i i, I really would no no lie no friend i really really would okay so let's just take that into consideration like don't feel like you know what you got going on is that detrimental because there are people out there that are way, way worse. You know, I watched this thing. Um, I was watching one of, one of the people I follow, Shalom Black. And, um, she, you know, she does YouTube videos. She's beautiful. And she's a burn victim. And she helped this girl who's also a burn victim. And she told her story. And there are some very hateful people in the world who could be like, oh, you're ugly. Oh, you, sh you know, like people are horrible. But it's also some people in the world who are just unappreciative of what they have. So you have this woman who has suffered tremendously through um, a child as being a burn victim. She's been put in a coma. Not Shalom, but the young lady, she was helping. She was fixing her makeup up and she's doing her makeup and making her feel better about herself. But this woman shared her story and she had this guy that she has a husband who loves her unconditionally, okay? Loves her unconditionally. And she was telling her story about how she was put into a coma because she was burned really bad as a kid and she had to be put into a medical induced coma just to help her out and to get through things. And then when you when I listened to her story and how she's went through things, I was just amazed like, damn, here it is. We as human beings, we complain a lot about the littlest fucking things in life. You know what I'm saying? The littlest fucking things. And here it is, someone like, her who ain't even complaining about shit and has taken life by the grips of the handle and has dealt with it and is not complaining and is happy and then we as people are just so unhappy with the littlest fucking things like facial hair and varicose veins and gaps in the teeth just belly fat just all kind of little things so I, I look at human beings like that and admire them because they're strong. Those are what you call strong individuals. And those are the type of people that I admire. Not Beyonce or fucking Jay-Z or Kim K and fucking Kanye. You know what I'm saying? I admire people that are, you know, just like regular human beings who have dealt with a lot in life and have still are very appreciative and acceptance to, to life. So those are what I, that's the type of person that I admire and the type of person that I like to be around. You know what I'm saying? Not knocking Jay-Z and Beyonce or Kanye and Kim, but I'm just saying some people just, 
take life for granted. And those are the type of people that they admire. Like they like symbolize these fucking celebrities who you think's lives are like, oh my God, that's Bay or and Jay and Kim and Kanye. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's nice. Those seem like they very happy couples, but then we all know the real truth. And then again, we really don't know the real truth. But you know what I'm saying? People need to really stop idolizing these superstars and these reality TV stars or these beauty gurus or whatever. Like, you know what I'm saying? And just admire yourselves and admire your family members. Admire those who are really changing life. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get a lot of people when I see people, oh my God, I'm such a huge fan of yours. Like, I have to tell them, are you a celebrity to me? I'm April. I'm not a celebrity to nobody. I'm just April. I'm a human being just like you. I go through the same shit as you guys go through. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe even worse. You know what I'm saying? So please don't idolize me. You know what I'm saying? Or please don't consider me to be a celebrity. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm neither or. I'm not a celebrity. I, I just want people to just like me for who I am. And that's that. And if you can't do that, then I don't know what to fucking tell you. But anyway, yes, that was my advice to you, my dear. And Leah, now moving on to the next real talk. Okay? Yes. Okay. So, hey, April, I've been watching you for a while. And I love how real you keep things 100. And I've already changed the name. So, I was... So, I was dating this boy, we'll call him Jeremiah, and we were dating for three years, a month or two about to be four years. I thought Jeremiah was going to be the one. Everything was fine. We went out and Skyped every day. He called me every day, and one day he moved school campuses, and it got to the point where he stopped doing the stuff he used to do. Eventually, we broke up. He gave me the excuse that because I never met his mother, um, his mom told him we couldn't be together which i was heartbroken and even went into a deep depression but i eventually got over him and got my life together but now he's been popping in and out of my life and every time i talk to him it's all my feelings keep coming back for him but i decided to search him up and go all detective and his dating and he is dating someone but yet he comes and talks to me for a few months and leaves for a few months and it goes on and on in a circle and those months he talks to me he claims I'm his girl, but his, he's dating, and he doesn't know that I know about him dating someone. It even got to a point where when he leaves me, he blocks me on everything, everywhere, almost like he's holding something, which is which he is. It seems like every month that he checks on me, he's checking that to see if I'm not dating anyone. And when I tell him I was talking to a guy, he gets jealous and defensive. I just don't know what to do. I would love for this to make it on one of your videos. If not, I hope you can reply back. So basically, um, she didn't tell me her name, but we're going to just call her Kathy. So Kathy's been dating Jeremiah for three, almost four years. And he broke up with her because she never met his mother. And his mother said that he should break up with her because he ain't never met her. Or she ain't never met him. So, basically, Kathy got depressed. I did say I was going to call her Kathy, right? She got depressed about it, pulled herself together, which is a good thing, and went on with her life. Well, Jeremiah's ass popped back in the picture, okay? And whenever he pops in the picture, it'd be for a few months, and then he'll go about his business, and then leave her alone, and then get back to her a few months later. And this keeps going on back and forth in a circle. So, Kathy been doing some investigating on Jeremiah. Basically, he got girls. He been dating somebody, but he lies and said he isn't or whatever. But then when he stops fucking with her for a few months, he blocks her from his social media. You know what I'm saying? So, that way she don't see that he's dating anybody. Now, he's gotten upset because she's dating somebody. And basically... She don't know what the fuck to do about it. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. I say this all the time. As long as you allow a man or anybody to do what the fuck they doing to you, they going to do it to you. So here's the first thing. What you need to do is let Jeremiah's fucking scumbag ass know. You already know what type of nigga he is. And that he has a girl. And that he ain't fooling nobody but his damn self. And he need to stop contacting you. And also, how he going to get fucking uptight about you in a relationship with somebody or you dating somebody. Nigga, you got a girl. Let me tell you something, Kathy. 
it's nice to have a boyfriend. It's nice to have a girlfriend. It's nice to be in a relationship with any fucking body. I get it. Listen, y'all hear me saying I want to have somebody. I want to meet somebody. I want to be in a relationship with somebody. And that's true. But I'm not about to allow you to be trying to play games with me and be going behind my back and scheming and scamming and having relationships and blocking me on social media and all that childish shit. I hate to see when dudes or girls do that to a nigga. Like, okay, I get it. If you got to block somebody because they are harassing you and shit, then go ahead. And if that's your ex-boyfriend and you got to block him because he's being an asshole, then go ahead. But if the nigga keep blocking you and unblocking you and then blocking you and unblocking you, nigga, just stay blocking me. This is what the fuck I would do. I would block your ass and I would not unblock you. It's childish to have to keep going back and forth with somebody blocking and unblocking, blocking and bl unblocking. But okay, Kathy, let's just be real about shit. You just as dumb as he is because you allowing him to keep unblocking you. You allowing him to keep coming in and out of your life. Nigga, either you gonna fuck with me or not. I'm not gonna allow you to keep coming back and forth. One minute you like me, then the next minute you don't. Then you wanna be my friend for three months and then you wanna leave me the fuck alone. Like, here's the thing. I wouldn't even give the dude an ultimatum. And when I say that, it's because this. You tell somebody you either going to do this or not. Like, meaning, if you want to give him an ultimatum, I'm like, listen, you either going to fuck with me or not. I wouldn't even give him that ultimatum. Because why, what for? Why would you want to give somebody an ultimatum that don't even respect you? And I say he don't respect you because if he did respect you, he wouldn't be playing games with you. He wouldn't be messing around. He wouldn't be coming in and out of your life. Oh, I love this fucking eyeliner, but it's running out. He wouldn't be coming in and out of your life. He wouldn't be blocking you and unblocking you. Blocking you and unfucking blocking you. Like, that makes no fucking sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, once I block you, bitch, I block you. You're not fucking coming back into my life. I'm not fucking with you anymore. It is what the fuck it is, okay? But you just as stupid as he is because you, for one, are allowing dude to do that shit to you. So, like, you just as dumb as he the fuck is, okay? For two... If he got a girl and you know this shit and you know that he's fucking around with bitches and, and he's dating other girls, why is you fucking putting yourself in that predicament to fuck with old dude? Like, you just asking for trouble. Like, I, this is the shit that I don't get. Like, okay, you know what? I can say this because I have been through it enough. And, and, I, and, I, and I get it. We, we fall in love with a nigga. He ain't worth shit. You know what I'm saying? He catches our heart. We catch feelings. And it's hard. You cannot choose who you love. But I'll be damned if you about to let me or fucking keep dogging me the fuck out. Don't y'all motherfuckers get tired of being mistreated. Okay? Like, seriously. My eyeliner is so fucked up today. Like, literally, it is so fucked up today. Like, dang. This is what I be talking about with y'all when I be like, I hate doing my eyeliner. Whatever. I'm going to fix it. Um, But don't y'all get tired of being dogged the fuck out and fighting over dudes or sitting there crying over dudes or girls or whatever. Like, there's a time in our lives where we got to realize, like, you know what? Let me grow the fuck up and get and move on with my life. Like, let me get over this dude. Let me go find somebody else who's worthy of my time. Yes. It's right there. She's coming out in two hours. Where? My wallet is right there. In right here under the table. Under the oh, table. I know I heard you. That's why I said I'm getting a real talk video to you making faces like that. Oh shit, he in the real talk talking shit. Why he's taking my the real talk is she need to really be quiet, huh guys? Oh, That's the real talk. Oh shit. Cause she's always talking about some nonsense, huh? Who and if you agree, post it in the comments below. Because it's not really real talk; it's real nonsense, right? <gasps> Thank you, guys. Oh shit! I'll be back in the next video, and I'll be reading those comments too because it's real <laughs> nonsense. You see what I'm saying? This is the shit that I'll be talking about. So he's gonna take my money and then talk shit in my video. Anyway, you made me forget what I was fucking talking about. It's in the zipper part. You know, I have two um, parts. Oh, I'm going to talk about his relationship next.
Mm-hmm. Bro, me and my girl, mm-hmm. we're doing just fine. Go ahead and talk about that. <laughs> Bye, I closed my door. Your sister coming home anyway, so. All right, see you later. So as I was saying before my son Wuzzle, because y'all never get to really see him like that, but that is my son, and we are both the same, meaning we are both Geminis, okay? And it ain't real nonsense, but he crazy anyway. Um, I don't be understanding why, you know what I'm saying, y'all constantly let somebody fuck with y'all. Like, it's hard to choose who the fuck you love. We love who we love. And I'll be the first to admit to that because I've had my relationships with people, meaning my ex-husband, who I still love. To this day, he is like my heart. And I say that all the time in my videos because it's the truth. Like, you know what I'm saying? You can't, you can't choose who you love if you could choose who you love i guarantee you like half the dudes that we choose we would not fucking choose okay but let me say this much there's a time when we have to just move on with our lives and get over it because as long as we step be are stagnant in the relationship and we allow the bullshit with the ex or the one that we love that we're with to keep fucking us over he or she gonna continuously fuck us over like I see it like this. They feel like, why well, mess up a good thing? Like, it may not be a good thing to you and me, that because we're the ones that's getting fucked, but it's a good thing to them because they got their cake, their ice cream, their cookies, their sandwich, and lobster tail, and everything else, and eating it too. You know what I'm saying? So, like, listen, Kathy and Jeremiah, you, you had your time. You had your share, your fair share running with Jeremiah, meaning... You dealt with him for three years. He left you suddenly. Yeah, he was doing nice things for you, meaning he took you out. He Skyped you. He called you. He texted you every single day. That's great. Who? That's great. That's that's great. It all begins like that. But then if he's breaking up with you suddenly because you didn't meet his mother, I guarantee you it was more than that. Because it started with he moved his campus on school, meaning... He stopped going to that school and he went to a different school. And once he moved to his schools, moved his campus, he started changing. That's because he broke up with you because he found somebody else. It has nothing to do with his fucking mother. Okay? That's where it all stems from. It has nothing to do with his mother. True indeed, you've been with a nigga for almost four years and you ain't meet his mother yet? That seems kind of fishy. But why is that? Is it because he didn't want you to meet her? He didn't put any initiative for you to meet her? Because if I'm with somebody for four years and I meet their mother, I'm surely going to inquire about it. I'm going to inquire about it within at least a year. I want to at least meet your mom within a year. Okay? That's all I'm saying. Wuzzle got his girlfriend and she come over here. And I know her. She come upstairs. She talked to me. She texted me. She called me. Hey, Miss April. You know what I'm saying? They have had their fair share of run-ins and issues. But I stays the fuck out of it. And on top of that, she know me. He's brought her around me. Okay? So she knows me very, very well. And I've met her mother. Okay? However, if you with somebody and you ain't meet their mother in at least a year, then honey child, listen... Especially if they live in the same area or a few states over. Girl, please. Or boy, please. There is something going on more than you can expect. And if this motherfucker done moved to a different um, campus and then he start acting all funny and shady towards you, this sweetheart, it ain't his mother. It's He done found some new pussy to dig up into. He got some new face to Skype. He got some new fingers to text. He got somebody else to take the fuck out. Has nothing to do with his motherfucking mother. Now, let me tell you this. Just like I said, I met Wuzzle's girlfriend and yeah, I, you know what I'm saying? And I already knew about it because they'd be on the phone. Now, did I ask to meet her? No, I didn't ask to meet her. But he was like, my girlfriend want to meet you. I want to bring my girlfriend to meet you. So this is what he did on his own. I didn't say, where your girlfriend at? I want to meet your girlfriend. He brought her around me on his own. And on top of that, he know what type of person I am. He know I can get very vulgar and loud and I have no filter. But he took it upon himself like, you know what? Let me bring her around to meet my mom. Because that's just what I do. Because he liked her. And he was feeling her. You know what I'm saying? And so that's that's the one thing that he did. He brought her around me. Now, listen, Kathy. I'm pretty sure you have feelings for Jeremiah. That's very obvious. And if you're with somebody for three or four years, definitely you're going to have feelings for them. 
even if they're treating you wrongly, you're still going to have feelings for them because you're accustomed to them and you've been around them for a minute. So that's just human like. However, you have feelings for him. Do you have feelings for yourself? You know what I'm saying? Do you love yourself? I say this all the time. You got to love yourself before you can love anybody the fuck else. Because if you don't care about yourself and you don't love yourself, then I guarantee you the person that you're with, they're going to mistreat you. They're not going to treat you like shit. Or you're going to allow just anything. You're going to allow them to treat you any type of way because you don't love yourself enough. And you're going to feel like that's what you deserve. Let me say this much. I'd be damned if I'm about to let some fucking non-purpose, irrelevant motherfucking dude come in and out of my life every few months. That's just not what I'm going to allow. You know what I'm saying? Because for one, the type of person I am, I feel like this. If you can't respect me for who I am and you can't respect me and be a human being towards me, then I can't fuck with you. But especially if you feel like you got it like that to where you can just like dip in and out of my life and relationship with me, then I'm definitely going to get rid of you. Because for one, the type of person I am, I'm not about to let you feel like, oh, it's okay to come in and out of my life when you feel like it. Because that right there shows that that person has control over you. Meaning, if you constantly keep allowing him to come in and out of your life whenever he wants, every three months, then he has a control over you. And a bitch like me ain't about to let nobody have no control over them. I, I'm just really not. I, mm -mm. I just don't. I, and I can't. I refuse to allow anybody to have control over me. And if you feel like you're about to come in and out of my life every three months, then do. And also, Kathy, I think you should grow some balls. Meaning, if you know he's, you know, blocking you and you know why he's blocking you because he has other girls, but he don't know you know that he has other girls. I don't know about you, but the type of person I am, I love to put somebody on blast. Like, for real. I love to confront somebody. I love to confront any fucking body. Especially if I know you doing me dirty. And especially if I know that you downright, downright wrong and you a scammer or you scandalous. I love to put a nigga on blast or a bitch. I have no issue with putting anybody on blast. Especially if you gonna get mad. So the nigga Jeremiah is catching an attitude because... Kathy told him that she got a man. Like, she's fucking with somebody. So, like, who the fuck are you to catch an attitude? But here's me. This is me. So, you already know that the nigga's been fucking with bitches. But he don't know you know. So, that's why he been blocking you. But he think you just stupid and naive. So, that's the number one strike. So, you think I'm stupid and naive. Two, you been blocking me. Three, you've been cheating on me. Four, you come in and out of my life. Five, you catch an attitude when I told you I was fucking with somebody. Six, now April about to blast you, put you on full blast. Because, nigga, you ain't about to be up on here catching attitudes with me, trying to get mad because I'm fucking with somebody. When, you nigga, you've been blocking me and you fucking bitches behind my back and you already broke up with me. Yeah, that, that shit was three or four years in a relationship. That shit was a while ago. We ain't together like that no more. We are not exclusive. Plainly blunt, we are not exclusive. Because if we was exclusive, nigga, you wouldn't be unblocking and blocking and unblocking and blocking me. Let me tell you this much, sweetheart. This is what the fuck I would do. I'm just saying, because this is what April would do. I would put that nigga ass on blast and let him fucking know. For one, I'm not stupid. I already know the reasons why you've been blocking me. Two, I already know you got bitches. And three, don't catch no motherfucking attitude with me because I'm seeing somebody. Me and you ain't exclusive. Me and you ain't even a motherfucking couple. And I would really appreciate it if you stop using my motherfucking number and stop fucking calling me and leave me the fuck alone. Better yet, I'm going to block you so that way we don't never have contact with each other because you're toxic and I don't got time for it. That's just what the fuck I would do. Now, Kathy, if you want to continue on with this circle of life that you're going through with Jeremiah, because his name should not be fucking Jeremiah. I mean, his name should be Lucifer. 
All right. But if you want to continue on with this circle with him, then y'all just keep going in a circle with the same shit, then continue to do that shit. But please don't write me and cry about it. However, if you don't want to be in that circle with him anymore and you just want to get rid of him and be rid of him, then what you need to do, sweetheart, boo boo, child, is put that nigga ass on blast and let him know you know about his infidelity, his bullshit or whatever. It's one thing, you know what? I understand sometimes you don't want to call a person out, but you know something? Sometimes you really have to call a motherfucker out. Like seriously, you have to put their ass on blast. And I say this because they always trying to claim like they know so much or they always trying to claim like they better than somebody or they always trying to claim like they write about something. And this is when you really need to put a person on blast or if they catch an attitude because you're doing something that they're doing. Like, who are you to catch an attitude about me seeing somebody else? Like, really, dude? Listen, honey, wake up, grow the fuck up and wake up and catch some balls. That nigga don't give two fucks about you. If he did, he would have never left you the fuck alone in the first motherfucking place. Two, he didn't leave you the fuck alone because of his mother. I told y'all last week, hold on, that I love this Lancome Monsieur Big Mascara. I loves it. Okay? Got it free too. But like I was saying, he didn't leave you because of his mother. He left you because... He found somebody else to Skype. He found somebody else to talk to on the phone. He found somebody else to take out and just to be with. It had nothing to do with his mother. When he moved away and he went to a different campus, that opened up doors for more girls, more people. There were more variety. And he found somebody that he was interested in. And I'm not saying any of this to break your heart or to hurt your feelings. I'm saying this because this is reality and this is what it is. Because if he really did care about you, three, four, three, four years is a long time. Is a long time to be with somebody, okay? That's a very long time to be with somebody, okay? And if you could just break up with somebody because your mother told you to break up with them, then you don't have balls. I'm sorry, but if my mother told me to break up with somebody after we've been together for four years and... We're grown adults. I'm not about to break out with you because my mother said that. Like, don't use that as an excuse. You know what I'm saying? If you, if he really cared about you, then he would have still been with you. And then he would have let you meet his mother. So, see, his reasons and excuses are not even valid in my book. You know what I mean? Not even valid. Here's the thing, and I'm going to just leave this and move on to the next, <laughs> seriously, and I say this all the fucking time, and sometimes we have to take our own advice, okay, sometimes we can't, but as long as you allow a person to treat you a certain type of way, they're going to continuously treat you that way, that goes with anybody, it doesn't even have to be in a relationship, meaning a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a husband, and wife, a, a, you know, say it doesn't have to be in that type of relationship. That goes to say with everyday life in general. If you allow somebody to treat you a certain type of way, they're going to continuously treat you that way. If you allow them to keep dogging you out, even if it's your friend, if you allow your friend to take advantage of you, if you allow your friend to walk all over you if you allow your friend to use you for whatever you have that they want you know what i'm saying if you allow your friend to cheat on uh, to, to fuck your man or steal from you if you allow any of that and they're going to continuously do it regardless it doesn't have to be in a in a in a relationship as man and woman or woman and woman it is in life in general if you were at work and you allowed your boss to continuously yell at you and to blame you for issues then he's going to do that that's just what's going to happen he's going to continuously allow you or he's going to continuously do that because you allow it sometimes in life, we don't like to put our foot down because we may want to spare the person's feelings or we may feel like, well, I'm not going to say anything because this is going to jeopardize me in some type of way. You know what I'm saying? After a while, 
that shit gets real fucking tiring. I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? Like it gets real motherfucking tiring after a while. And I've learned as a grown ass woman and as a woman of my age and statue, I'm not about to put up with nobody's fucking bullshit. I don't give a fuck what type of shit or how it's going to jeopardize me. I'm not about to allow you to walk all over me and fucking put up with your bullshit. That just like, okay, when I had a job, I was it was a temporary job, and I got it through a job agency, and it was a really great job. You know what I'm saying? I worked at a, um old folks nursing center, but it was a really nice one. They got pools, workout gyms. They had all kind of shit, golf carts. So it was more or less a rec center. Excuse me, not a nursing center, but a, um, an elderly recreation center. And this was out here. So I was there for like two weeks, I think. Almost. And the first time the lady, you know, she had me, they would take pieces of paper, like, you know, regular pieces of paper like this, okay? And it would have a print on this side, on the opposite side, it wouldn't have anything. So they would save these papers and they would cut them up into spores, into fours. They would take the paper cutter and they would cut them up into fours and use them as, you know, message papers, scrap papers, which was great. You're utilizing it. Well, they told me about this, and I cut it. I cut the papers up into fours. Now, mind you, the lady that was in charge, she was kind of bougie, bossy, whatever. She thought she was better than other people because she was in charge of this place. Now, I don't know you from a hole in the wall, but I'm gathering this. I'm, like, seeing this. I'm, this is how I'm seeing you are treating the women because these women here, they all on their toes. They, like, walking on eggshells and shit. You know what I'm saying? And me, I'm not about to walk on nobody's motherfucking eggshells because I'm too heavy for that. A bitch is too big to be walking on eggshells, so I'm not about to. But whatever. Now, let her say a couple of little snide things. Not even really snide because I was like, April, I need, uh, April, you need your job, okay? But what got me finally was when I had cut the paper, the scrap papers in four with the paper cutter. Did this bitch have a problem because they weren't even? Meaning, the fours were not all the exact same squares. So, the one lady who was underneath her, she was in charge of me. She came and told me. She didn't like the fact that you brought the paper into her office. And she also didn't like the fact that the paper wasn't even. At first, I didn't know what she meant because I was, like, in the middle of working. And I didn't know what she meant by she didn't like the fact that the paper wasn't even. I understood the fact that she didn't like that I brought it in her office. But bitch, you asked for the motherfucker. She said, when you're done cutting the paper, can you bring me some? Well, where the fuck you want me to bring it to? You wanted, you asked me to bring you these papers. So I did that, just that. I brought you the papers. I left them on your desk because you was on a phone call and I left the office. I didn't say, hey girl, I seen you on the phone. I put the stack of paper down that I cut and I went back to doing what I was doing. Now, I did that part, what you asked for. Now you got the next lady who's underneath you coming to me, complaining about it. So she says to me, she didn't like the fact that you came and brought them to her in her office. And she didn't like the fact that they were even. Okay, so like I said, I was very understanding about the fact that you didn't like me that I brought them to you. I don't know how else you wanted me to give them to you. Did you want me to just put them on the floor by your door? Bitch, I don't motherfucking know, okay? But whatever. But when she said that the, they weren't even, I was like, what? She said, yes, the squares, the, the, they weren't even. The paper wasn't even. I said, it's scrap paper, right? She said, yes. I said, I cut them into fours, right? She said, yes. I said, but, so they weren't even? She said, no, and she likes everything to be perfect. I said, so what is she going to do with the paper after she writes a note on it? She's like, she's going to throw it in the garbage because it's scrap paper. So what the fuck is the problem? Like, I didn't say, so what the fuck is the problem? I was like, so what's the problem then? Let me tell you, I, I went to my lunch break, and I called the temp agency, and I was in tears in the car, okay? Now, let me tell you all about this one right here. Okay, so this, this before I even get into it, the Velcro on this needs to be a little bit longer, all right? That's what I'm going to tell y'all real quick. Because this Velcro is longer. So when you pull it over, it has room. So you know what I'm saying? So it needs to be a little bit longer. 
So, I guess a bitch is gonna have to motherfucking sew this one, too. Listen, I'm... I don't even give a fuck no more. Okay, so I got in my car, like I was saying. Yeah, it definitely needs to be longer because that shit is like all the way over here. But we're gonna just put it right there for right now because it doesn't have to be too tight. I feel like everything has to be tight. So, I call the, um, the temp agency and I'm like, you know, I'm telling them what's going on. And they're like, we understand how she is. That's why a lot of people that we send there don't last. So you send me somewhere that you know people don't last at because this bitch attitude. Whatever. They felt like I was a good fit for her, though. Well, I don't know why because I'm not yes, ma'am. I'm not a house nigga. I might be light-skinned, but I'm not a motherfucking house nigga. And you ain't about to fucking boss me the fuck around and talk to me in your kind of way for no dollars. That's not about to happen, Okay. I will get my money another way. I'm not about to kiss nobody's fucking ass and be running around here like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I sorry. I sorry about the, the paper squares not being even. I sorry, ma'am. I sorry. No, bitch, because the first thing I will tell you is, bitch, you can suck a dick and kiss my ass. And this is, that's the first thing I'll tell you because you're not about to come on and come at me. Like, she really came at me about the papers. And the reason why I went and called them and was crying, because it took the life out of me not to say nothing, to go off on her. The type of person that I am, I'll let you have it in a heartbeat. And it's not even that. Like, I'm not about to allow you to just disrespect me. Like, I found, like, I found it to be very disrespectful the way the lady came at me about the fucking, um papers like she really came at me in like a real t a different kind of tone and like the type like bitch you don't know me like that don't come at me over no fucking foolishness like i thought that was really foolish you just said you confirmed that she's gonna throw this scrap paper in the garbage so why the fuck does it matter if it's not even like the rest of them that's just really petty like to me there's so much more in life to worry the fuck about and so the temp agency they called while I was on my lunch. They called the office and was like, you know, we're going to um, we're going to remove her because she's just not happy there. I was like totally not fucking happy after that. And I did not know that they, you know, was going to remove me that fast. They just was like, basically, we'll find you a new place. Can you just work it out there for like a couple more days? And I was like, yeah, OK. But I guess they heard it in my voice that I was really upset and my feelings. I was like really hurt, like my feelings was really really fucking hurt and they took me out of there and I was I was I wasn't I wasn't sad about it I was happy but at the same time it was like dang that was pretty fast um I really wanted my money my paycheck but you know it is what it is okay cool I'm gonna just go home and after that I never went back to work again I just decided April just go harder on your YouTube channel and just do what you gotta do to get your shit together and that's what I did but the whole moral of the story is if you allow people to talk to you any old kind of way and treat you any old kind of way, they fucking will. And it doesn't matter where the fuck they at. As you see, right there, it was a job. That bitch felt like it was okay for her to talk to me that kind of way. Because she was used to doing that to everybody the fuck else. All those other women were walking around on eggshells because she felt like she was the shit. And she was God's gift to mankind. So she felt like it was okay to talk to people like that because they allowed it, okay? And here comes the black girl. Honey, I'm not about to allow you to talk to me about it. I don't give a fuck about your four squares of paper. You can take that paper, you can shove it up your ass for all I care. Better yet, bitch, how about you paper cut your motherfucking stuff to pieces for all I give a fuck? We not about to go there. You not about to just mistreat me and talk to me in your kind of way over no motherfucking paper that you gonna throw in the garbage. Like, how petty is that? There are so much more things in life to worry about. And that goes to say with a lot of people, like, you know what I'm saying? It be those bougie ass motherfucking people, white, black, Chinese, it don't motherfucking matter, who will think that they can talk to you any old kind of way and treat you like shit. And even in a relationship with a man and a woman, they will treat you like shit for as long as you allow them to. And then the first time you put your foot down and say something to them, they look at you like you got five motherfucking heads. Like, no, the fuck you didn't, bitch. Yes, the motherfuck I did. So, tongue smack. Kathy, 
You need to let Jeremiah's fucking Lucifer ass know. You know about his bullshit and what type of person he is. And he can block you for the rest of his motherfucking life. Peace, deuces, nigga. Go ahead. Move the fuck on because you done with the shit. But if you don't want to tell him that and you want to continue to live your fucking life in a circle with this nigga, then bitch, by all means, go ahead. Have at it. Have fun with it. If you like it, bitch, I motherfucking love it. And don't email me again. Okay? Bottom line. And so on that note, bitches. Ooh, do you see that highlight? I know y'all like, what is that? It's this cheap little palette by Oakland. Glowing Palette Summer's Kit. So it is a inspired palette of Anastasia's little moonshot or whatever. I love this damn thing. I got it from um, shophush.com. And I do have a coupon code. I think it's Muffin10. <laughs> Hopefully I'll remember and I'll post the um, information below. But I love this thing. It's so pigmented and it's like 10 bucks, 10 or 12 dollars. <gasps> Girls, they got a lot of really nice makeup on their website. So I like to um, get stuff from there. But yes, this is the palette. You know, I try to switch it up all the time. Definitely, definitely check them out. Um, they have a lot of nice stuff. And I hope you guys enjoyed this real talk. And that, it, um, that unexpected invite from my son right here you know what i'm saying he had to come through i had his money in my wallet and shit so dang he was just like so rude about it the nigga didn't even say hi he just started talking shit but that's my sweetheart he gets in a lot of shit like seriously he be into some he always in trouble for some shit and i'm always there to bail his ass the fuck out but i love him he's loving my life like all of my kids they are the love of my life i love them so much and i'll do anything in the world for them so yes you guys definitely i hope you guys enjoyed this real talk it was kind of like all over the fucking place but in case you were wondering about the products that i use the foundation so i actually found this foundation online um by watching destiny godly and a couple other youtube beauty gurus oh my god i hate when i buy shit from watching people's youtube videos because sometimes it'd be some bullshit but um wayne Gro wayne gosley i think that's his name He's a white guy that does makeup. He swears by this. I, I trust him and Destiny Godly. So this, the, and I also seen it in magazines. This is called The Ordinary Colors. It's um, Serum Foundation Lightweight. It's really good. Um, it's been sold out, but you can, trust me, you know when you put your email in to get a notification when it comes back and stop? They really do. So this is how I got this one. And I got four different emails today for different colors that been in stock. So I'm about to get those. But altogether, this cost me with the shipping and everything. 10 bucks like under 10 bucks i think it was like nine dollars it's really inexpensive it works really well it comes with a pump doesn't come with a cap that goes over the pump but i don't really care but it's very lightweight you know what it reminds me of it reminds me of that nyx foundation that i was using a cup of for like a month they have the same consistency except for this lasts a lot better on my oily ass skin and i don't really like cake face so if you guys love cake face then maybe this not for you but it does give a nice coverage as you can see you can still see my freckles and I really rather you see my freckles and I just don't like a lot of makeup but this stuff works amazing it is um how many ounces it is one fluid ounce one full of fluid ounce and it has a really great way of showing the color spectrum on skin tones so it also will tell you I'm the color 2.1 yellow I really thought I was getting this for a highlight but yellow because i have yellow undertones and you see how well it matches my skin like i don't have to do anything else like i have other foundations where i have to mix it with something else to make it work like the becca cosmetics one that i paid 40 something dollars for i have to mix it with something else and also it transfers a lot so this doesn't transfer which i really like so definitely check this out it's called the ordinary just like ordinary the ordinary colors colors with a u c o l o u rs the ordinary colors just google it you'll find their website really really great stuff um i also use that on my face as you see i use the lancome translucent silky um loose powder i love this um the color that i have is 300 um i don't use it to bake because i'm not into all of that baking shit i just use it versus using my normal milani um pressed powder i love this too um, i'm using the color dark tan but this works even better for me it gives me like this nice silky finish which is amazing um the eyelash mascara that i use is by lancome it's monsieur big i also did get this from octoly for free i showed you guys that last week so i got this and this and i love this um mascara you know i love mascara i didn't use it on my top lashes because 
bitch don't have to. Um, this concealer that I put on my face is at the end of it, so that's why I kept using it um, because I don't really don't have much. But it's Revlon's Age Defying um, Concealer. I've had this for a couple of years, so the packaging has changed. Um, also, on my face, what I spritzed first, of course, I did show you guys this Shop Miss A. Down below is the direct link for that. On my face, also, which I do like a lot, is this Kiss Pro Touch Mattifying Primer. This is really good for oily skin, so definitely you don't need a lot of this. And if you guys have been purchasing the Becca one, try the Kiss one. It is way, way cheaper, and to me, it's a lot better. So I would definitely suggest this. And on my eyes, under my brows, I use the Kiss Professional Con um, Concealer Cream Contour Palette. I love this. I only use it for... My under eyes. Sometimes I use this color right here and right here for a little bit of contouring, but I don't really like to cream contour. But it's really good for under my eyes. Oh, I was using my Tarte Eyeshadow Palettes as well. I don't really use these too much, but this, um, I do like them a lot. I'm a very neutral color girl. And in case you were like, girl, what eyeliner was you fighting with? That took forever to put on and had to fix. It's the NYX Liquid Vinyl Eyeliner. Oh, my God. I love this stuff. Oh, I need to get some more. The brush is really good. So, look, I had to take the brush and use this L.A. Colors one to dip it into because, child, I love the brush. But, yes, you guys, um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It wasn't even a tutorial. Why do I keep fucking calling it that? Anyway, as for this wig grip thing, well... You know what? Each one of them has their pros and their cons. I'm not even going to go there with you guys. I guess it all depends on your head size, but the black one that came in a two-pack, it does need a little bit longer Velcro. Trust and believe a bitch got Velcro up here, okay? So I would either sew it to make it tighter. Nine times out of ten, I would probably sew, pull this in like I did this little raggedy brown one here to make it tighter because the Velcro is so short. But I... I I'm always pulling something extra tight because I feel if it's tighter, it's not going to move. Well, it's on loose and it's just fine. But yes, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, the reason why you see me with two scarves, because I do have two scarves. I have the blue one inside. It's thicker. The thicker the material, the better your top knot bun will be. So keep that in mind. But yes, I hope you guys enjoyed my real talk. I will see you guys in the soon to come video. I'm about to go get Tati. I'm about to go to the hospital and wait for her to get discharged. Me and Tinky. So yeah, I will see you guys soon. Keep her and her your spirits. I love you guys. And leave your comments below. Okay, so real quick, because I know I have ended this video. And it is real talk, okay? So real talk, I like to acknowledge everybody and just say thank you to everyone. But also, I just came back from my post office box. So, me and Mumsy had some stuff in there. And I was like, I cannot post this video without saying thank you. So, Mumsy got a box. And this is from Love Amy, East Coast Amy. Sent her a bunch of cool stuff. Mumsy want to say thank you. She said, I'm not dressed though. I'm not dressed. So... We're going to let Mumsy come through on a real talk video. Because, you know, my other son that interrupted. So, you want to come say hi and say sure. thank you. It's, um, her name is East Coast Amy. Hi. Thank you for sending me the stuff, Amy. Can't see you. Like, you know, you got to. There you go. Thank you for sending me the stuff, Amy. I like it. And, hi. So, she's got some of this. Because everybody knows Mumsy love emojis. So, I'm saying this, this bag is so cute. This is really, really cute. I don't know East Coast Amy. I'm going to have to check it. She got pencils for school. Emoji band-aids. Ooh. Tinky, my grandson, going to need one. Because I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a beat him down. So, he's going to need one. Emoji. Um, notepad. And some emoji stickers. So, and a little love note. So, she wanted to say thank you. So, there you go. And there you go. So also, like I was saying, so I went in my post office box and I was like, okay, let me open this up. You know, we just came back from bringing Tati from the hospital and she is doing much better. Thank goodness. So you see, look at the power of walking away from the computer. So anyway, so I got this amazing gift in the post office from Bethany. Bethany from Virginia. Okay, so I had to show y'all this because when I seen it, I was like, oh. So, first of all, did she send me The Walking Dead? Okay, what? The Walking Dead pillowcase. This is so 
freaking cute it's like a decorative pillowcase so i'm definitely putting this somewhere i'm gonna put this right in my living room my um since i got new furniture it's gonna go perfectly with that and i'm gonna put it right in there okay so i can see it all the time and also this one i didn't even get to open up yet i already knew who it was she said oh this is so cute all people you know who I am. The world needs to me, needs me to be. I am Wonder Woman. Look at this nice ass Wonder Woman pillowcase. This is fucking pretty. This is so pretty. I love the colors in this. This is really, really nice. Like for real. My mouth dropped open when I seen The Walking Dead when I was like, but then okay, so she sent me some shirts too. Girls, I was like, dang. So I got a Wonder Woman shirt, and this is gorgeous. This is so cute. Okay, and I told you guys, I did see the movie, so I absolutely love it. Um, A Walking Dead one. Now, Bethany, you know you dead ass wrong for sending me this. Like, dead ass wrong. Because you know I hate him with a passion. So does this say property of Negan on it? Like... I hate him. I just want to smack his face off. For real. I'm going to still wear it because I think it's funny. Um, but I, And I love The Walking Dead. I can't wait for October to hit. Um, I got some bomb ass socks. Okay. Some Walking Dead socks. These are nice because, oh, these are really nice. Okay, so I thought these was like um, the socks that go like, like longer socks. These are anklets. These are even nicer. I love The Walking Dead, you guys. Like, seriously, like, I love The Walking Dead. That is like one of the best shows in history. Like, seriously. So it came with five pair of socks. Wow. I'm saying. Okay, what? I got to check this hat out. So this is my second Wonder Woman hat. I didn't even take it out the plastic because I was like, damn, this hat is nice. Okay, hold the fuck up. Is it blinging like it got some kind of like glitter type material on it? Like, oh, I'm saying, so now I got two Wonder Woman hats. And I never even wore my first one from Jennifer because I just don't want to ruin it. It's still got the tag on it. And she sent me this cup that's sitting right next to it. So now I'm going to just do the same. It's right in my display. So definitely, I'm going to have to change my display. Everything going to have to be one of them. Right now. And the best for last. Bam. I'm saying though, no. do you guys see this book bag? Like, y'all bitches know y'all hating right now. Like, Seriously, this book bag is the shit. Mumsy was like, you can wear that when we go see grandma. Like, I love this bag. This is so fucking cute. Like, listen, I'm going to be walking through the airport with a one's a woman book bag, one's a woman hat, um, a one's a woman shirt. I got some one's a woman leggings. Oh, God. People going to be like, is this bitch a superhero? Like, seriously, is she a superhero? I got a Wonder Woman robe. I mean, I'm just saying. I am I think I'm a superhero now. So, you guys, I love you. Thanks for staying tuned. I hope you guys enjoyed Real Talk because it was all over the place. But I had to come through and say thank you. So, see you guys next week.